Hello and welcome to the show. Welcome to the weekend edition. It is February 4th, 2022. So this is just uh, me talking about some things that were on my mind about metamaterials and metamaterials torchlight preferred shares. MMTLP and MMAT. So let's uh, let's go over some quick price action. Uh, Friday was uh, flat. <laughs> we started the week uh, up twelve percent, and then and then we went up another twelve percent, and then we gave back some gains, and went sideways after that. And we had some da- yeah, we had some slight downside to give back a little bit more gains. But overall, in terms of the week, we're up. So uh, we're at one sixty nine. We're still down from you know from our highs even just six months ago or a few months ago. So uh, we still have a lot of, of, of room to uh, to get back. Looking at uh, MMTLP, we see that it's relatively flat, ending at about $1.24. Uh, typically, it trades between um, $1, to, $1 to $2, and um, it's, a, it's a remarkably stable... Uh, it's a remarkably stable share. <laughs> so... Um, Part of the reason I wanted to make this video is I think I made a mistake. And it's in this slide in my previous video. Do you, do you see where I, may, I might have made the mistake? I'll give you a, a slight hint. Oh, well, I'll, 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 I'll give you a little bit of time to look at it. Anyway, so um, if you want, pause the video. But otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it is. It's this line over here, right? The corporate tax. So um, the corporate tax is listed as, tw- as 21%. But if this spin-out is a non-taxable event, then shouldn't the corporate tax actually be zero? Because it's non-taxable, right? That said, let's see what happens if the corporate tax is zero. In that case, we get an increase in our, um, in our dividend per preferred share. It goes up to $61.61. And uh, the first part of the payout goes up to thir- goes up to thirty dollars and nineteen cents, about half, right? So it's pretty good. Now there's another update along the way. We see that the price of oil has gone up significantly. When we made that chart last, it was eighty five dollars a barrel, but by the end of the week, it's now ninety dollars a barrel, ninety plus actually. So let's enter in ninety dollars a barrel. See what happens there. Well, at that point, our, our, our first part of the payout goes up to $32, and the, and the total valuation is at $66.74. It's pretty good. That said, uh, I think that there's been some, some inflation going around, so I'm increasing the cost of goods sold to $28 from 25 So that drops the overall total dividend per preferred share to $63.66. That's if you were to get 100% of Oilco, but we know the chances are for a tax-free spin-out, you'd probably be getting 49% or so, and that drops you down to about $31.19. So uh, so what happens if you reinvest that back? Well, if, you, if uh, a quarter of the money goes back to reinvesting, we know that the total amount of money uh, for that dividend would be uh, 5.1 billion dollars. If a quarter goes back, that's about one. That's about 1.28 billion dollars. That uh, we know the current price is a buck 69 per share. That means you can buy up to 761 million shares, which means that there aren't enough shares. <laughs> You're short by 572 million shares. <laughs> You're short by a lot of shares there. If uh, if an eighth of, of all that money uh, went back in, about 12.5%, that means you're still short by 191 million shares. And if a sixteenth of all that money went right back in, you're short by 1.67 million shares, about. So if just a sixteenth of all that dividend money went back in, you'd still be short a, a hell of a lot of shares. So, that said, what about the other half? We were only talking about the first half. The other half would be an Oilco share, and how much is that share worth? Well, we think that the price of oil is going up, and if that's the case, I put in a buck, uh, I put in a hundred twenty. Uh, I put in a hundred twenty dollars for the price of oil. 
which is where we expect the price of oil to be by, by around the summertime. That means that that oil co share might be worth as much as $48.18. Add the two figures up, $31 plus $48, you wind up with $79.37. And that's the total amount that you might be getting in terms of like dividend valuation, right? Or, or spin out valuation. That's, uh, that's pretty good for a buck 25. <laughs> it's pretty hard to beat those returns. So, oops, went the wrong way. Uh, so, along the way, I uh, was on Twitter and uh, I got a, I got a tweet from Jbridge Nine. So, thanks to Jbridge Nine. Uh, thanks for the question. You made me think. I, I much appreciate it. <laughs> this was a tweet. In case you you may or may not have seen it, it said enjoyed your latest video. Find it interesting that you hear people talking. I find it interesting that you don't hear people talking about the unavailable unavailable shares if 25% of the divvy of the divvy is is uh, invested back. Mm -hmm. But more than that, what about all the shares the shorts owe from Torch buy and hold? And uh, that's a Saturn V rocket that's that's uh, launching in that's in this gif. That's the rocket that went to the moon. <laughs> so that led me to think. So these are the um, torch. These are the torchlight failures to deliver in 2021. A whole lot of them. And as you can see, towards the end, you had most of the failures to deliver. You had huge volumes of failures to deliver towards the end. That uh, that last big spike is about uh, 10.58 million shares. The uh, spike before that is about 8.6, or the next highest spike is about 8.673 million shares. That's a lot. Okay, so uh, in general, general thoughts from various, from myself and others probably, most people are probably thinking this, is that, you know, they probably didn't cover. Most people are pretty sure that they didn't cover, at least by feel, right? The question is, what happened? You know, can't, aren't they supposed to cover? You know, when are these guys going to finally deliver these shares? There's a, usually a sense of frustration that goes around. Uh, some people are thinking T35. Hey, when? Wh wh what's the whole purpose of, of this T35 stuff? Nothing's happening, right? And uh, and another question is, well, how many shares were actually short total? These are just the failures to deliver. You know, uh, were there a lot more shares that were that were short, naked short? Who knows, right? It's you know, they're being routed through dark pools. Who knows what's going on here? So my take is, uh, it's an issue. Uh, and it's really hard to say what uh, it's really hard to it's it's really hard to think about you know how will this play out? I mean, they didn't deliver for the longest time, and they're very innovative in finding ways to hide and borrow shares and continue to kick the can down the road. I mean, Torchlight shares should not exist anymore because Torchlight the company doesn't exist anymore. Yet they found some way to kick the can down the road. And I don't know if they'll find some other way to kick the can down the road, to be honest. It's really hard to say. They're, uh, the innovative ways they find to actually kick the can down the road is beyond the pall. I, I can't even Im imagine how these guys come up with it. And don't expect the SEC to, to like, you know, force them to cover because, you know, the SEC is like, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, we understand. Yeah, you can kick the can down the road. <laughs> They've been saying that for the longest time, so I don't. I'm not really expecting, you know, Gary Gensler and the SEC to come in like a white knight and save us. You know, there's no white knights here. The SEC is not going to save us. <laughs> that's my that's my take. All that said, okay, not expecting help from the SEC. I don't expect <laughs> that 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 these guys will suddenly, you know, say, hey, that that you know, they're not going to roll over and say, hey, you know, we need to cover, because <laughs> I don't think they covered. All that said. Here's what I, here's what I real here's here's what I, here's what I think will happen right you got torchlight shares the torchlight shares became series A preferred shares and metamaterial stock right that's that's what happened they got converted they, the company merged you wound up with these two things okay and somewhere along the way the series A preferred shares became MMTLP the metamaterials torchlight preferred shares okay so now you got left with MMTLP and MMAT so your TR, TRCH shares became this. And so what that means is, if you were short Torchlight shares, 
you're going to be short all the stuff, right? It, the, 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 the shorting just goes, you know, it, it follows all this, this pattern, right? So that means in the end, you're going to be short metamaterials torchlight, and you're going to be short MMAT. If you were short torchlight, this is what you, this is what you'll be left with being short, right? And that means that the, in terms of all the shares that exist, you got the regular MMTLP shares, plus what, I, what I'll call the synthetic shares, right? The, the shares that came about from naked shorting. You got the regular MMAT shares and the synthetic MMAT shares, okay? Now we know that Metamaterials is gonna announce and pay a special dividend for the MMTLP shareholders. We know that. There's 165 million shares, and that's what they're going to pay for. Let's just say they pay 50 bucks a share. Okay? If, if they pay out 50 bucks a share, they're going to pay out 50 bucks times 165 million shares, and that's it. They're not going to be paying out synthetic shares. <laughs> right? So, but the synthetic shares have to get paid, right? Because people bought them. They didn't say, oh, I'd like to buy a synthetic share. No, they said, I want to buy MMTLP. <laughs> They're not saying, I want to buy something that, you know, is is sketchy. No, no, no. People are saying they want the real thing. They want MMTLP. So there is no such thing as far as a buyer is concerned of a synthetic MMTLP. They're just, con as far as they're concerned, they have MMTLP. And when they go to their broker and they tell their broker, I want to buy MMTLP, their broker puts into their account something that says MMTLP. Doesn't matter if it's synthetic, doesn't matter if it's real. Okay. So who's going to pay that $50 per share? Someone's got to pay it. Because when Metamaterials announces it and they pay it out, they're only going to pay out $165 million, right? The short answer is the broker's going to pay it out. The broker of whoever has that share, uh, the broker of whoever bought those MMTLP, MMTLP shares will pay their customer th that dividend. But how much is that dividend? That dividend can, if you look at what the total amount of that dividend is, right, that Metamaterials would might be paying out, it's something like, if it's if it's thirty one dollars a share, that's five point one billion dollars. That's not if it's fifty bill. That's not if it's fifty bucks a share. If it's thirty one dollars a share, they're paying out five point one billion dollars. Now you think the brokers are gonna actually say, hey, look, you can have five point one billion dollars out of my bank account? Hell no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And it's probably even more than that, because if there's 100% naked shorts, right, you're, t you're talking about 5 point, you're talking 5 billion plus, who knows, I don't know, if there's 200%, that's 10 billion, if there's 1000%, that's $50 billion, okay, I don't know how many naked shorts there are, nobody knows how many, how many naked shorts are, there are, I don't think even the freaking brokers know. But they do know who the naked shorts are, they may not have counted it, but there's a direct line of track right? Because, you know, the brokers aren't going to pay out all that money. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to get the naked shorts to pay them. And w whatever the naked shorts pay, it's going to get funneled through the broker back into whoever has the MMTLP shares. So those shares will get paid out. And what that means is that there's a huge liability for, th for the naked shorts for MMTLP. They're going to get screwed over really big time because they naked shorted torch and i don't think that they have any way to get out of this so although i don't know how many shares are there i don't know how many shares will be paid out i don't know when they'll be forced to cover but i do know i do know this much once that divvy comes out they're gonna have to pay they're gonna have 10 days probably to pay and they're gonna have, have to come up with a large amount of money and their brokers are not going to say, oh, we're going to extend the cash to you because their brokers are basically not going to, I mean, yeah, they're, they're going to say, hey, do you have some way to pay back this, you know, five or $10 billion? And, uh, you know, the naked shorts are going to be like, uh, we don't know. <laughs> they're going to, yeah, at that point, their broker, they'll probably get a margin call. And that's, that's the way that's going to, that's the way that's going to work out. So the big question that everyone has is, when Divi, right? <laughs> when Divi? Everyone's been asking this, whether or not they even think about this. When Divi? Every, everyone wants to get paid. <laughs> we know that the price of oil is going to head towards 100 bucks this year and more. Okay? So, and the buyers of the Oregrande Basin project, they know that oil prices are increasing. 
and that what that means to them is that the cost to buy that pro to, the cost to buy that project is going to be increasing so they want to close that deal as soon as possible they don't want to wait they really want to close it as soon as possible they want that oil land before the price of oil goes to 100 bucks a share before it goes to 120 bucks a share but before it goes to 150 bucks a share they want to close that deal okay we know that george Palica uh george palicaris he wants to spin out asap because he said so in the ces interview okay he's a straight shooter i believe him okay i i really sincerely believe he wants to close it out asap he wants to to say hey look we're going to pay out the you know we're going to pay out this divvy it'll be done it'll be over with right so what's the hold up why is it taking so long well it's taken this long because we need to follow precise rules and the rules are set forth by the irs and if you follow the rules you'll get a tax-free spin out and if you don't follow the rules you could wind up paying a huge tax burden so they're taking their time hiring the best lawyers they can you know and making sure that they follow those rules precisely because those rules are not exactly clear and um, they're going to make sure that that tax-free spin out happens in a tax-free way <laughs> so uh, so that's my take on it anyway these are just my thoughts my musings uh it is uh 2022 so uh february 4th and um let me end by saying I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This information is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay. With that said, have a good weekend and goodbye.